Welcome once again to the 21st century where video editing is pervasive. It is everywhere. And today I'm going to show you how to add photos to your video. In fact, you can make a whole video out of nothing but photos if you wanted to. Let me show you how. Now, before we talked about up here, this is our event. Let me click on this to kind of remind you. This is our event library. It shows us our events for videos, okay? This is, these are our, our video events. These are not our photos. To add photos, we have a couple of ways of doing it. One is, there's a button over here to add photos. And that'll show your photos from iPhoto. So you click on that, and suddenly you can see all of the photos that you've got in iPhoto. So if I wanted to grab this picture here of San Francisco Airport with their airplanes flying around, it ties in with the space thing, I can just drag this on over and decide where I want to put it. Now you see that green bar that just showed up? I'm going to take it off and have it show, watch where it shows up again. It's going to show up right at the end. There we go. And then if I move the pointer over here, suddenly a green bar will start to show up in between clips, and then I can add it there. Or I can slide it all the way there, or I can put it right at the beginning, and now it's at the beginning. And so now I had a photo, have a photo there. And if I hit the space bar, that's sort of my play pause button, by the way. And you see there, there's a little bit of a Ken Burns effect where it's kind of oh, pulling out a little bit on that uh, picture. So you can adjust that if you want. And all you have to do is come up here and click on that crop button. And it gives you an option. Here's the Ken Burns effect. You notice there's a green box for where it starts and a red box for where it ends. Well, if you wanted, you can actually make click on the red box and you can zoom it in to make the end part be a close-up of the airplanes. And then make the green box the one that starts out wide. So it's kind of moving to the left and to the right. So let me click on the red one again. There we go. Looks pretty good. And if I want to see what it looks like, I just hit play, and there we go. So now I've got it doing that. I could have also adjusted it this way. I could have said start. Let's zoom that down. Let me pull it up. And I could have just gone from the right side to the left side to give a sense of battle going on. Let's hit the play and see what that looks like. And there you go. So basically, you've taken a, I've taken a still image and I've turned it into a video. Now, if you find it's not quite long enough, it's like you want, this, you want it to be a little slower pan across, you can change the length of that still. By default, the still uh, is like four seconds or something. But the way you do it is you just come down here and you click on the I button, the inspector button, and it brings up this little window. And in this window, it's four seconds. I can change that to six seconds. Just hit six and hit done. And now it's six seconds, so I can click on this again and, and preview it and see how it looks. Well, it's a little bit slower. And if it's still not good enough, you hit the I button and say, nope, let's make that 10 seconds done. And now click on this again and hit play. And now it's even slower. So maybe that's the appropriate length of, that you want. Okay. So I'm clicking the crop button again to stop it from playing. And there's other things you can do. That crop button actually can do a crop as well. So it can crop the image. And so I can basically draw a box around the part that I want. Maybe I want it to be just a still. I don't want it to pan across the image, but I just want it to crop the image. I can do that. I pull that up. I want to get those people out of there and just see the planes. And then click play to see what it looks like. That's what I'll get. Hit the crop button again. And I can also choose to fit and it'll just automatically fit, but no panning across the image, okay? By default, the Ken Burns effect is on. And there's a way that you can turn that off when every time you import an image. Let me show you how. Under the File menu, under Project Properties. Remember we saw this when we first started? Well, this is how you can go back in and change those things, but now you see this other button called Timing. And under timing, the transition, those are those crossfades between slides, you can adjust that to make that a full second or a half a second, whatever you want. You can also do the photo duration, and by default, it's a four. But you can make the default to be one second or to make it seven or six. I find five works pretty well for most photos. That's about how long I keep them up, unless I do a Ken Burns effect where I'm panning across an image, so I'm really looking at it in more detail. I'll need a little more time. But as a default, the five seconds is good. 
I don't always use the Ken Burns effect on every photo, so I may want to, by default, say fit in frame. And that way it'll do that by default. And for video, the same thing. You can say fit in the frame or for it to be cropped, depending on whether it's a, a wider screen video or that doesn't quite fit with the same format as the rest of your video. So I'm just going to leave it to crop, that's fine. And then you click OK. So that's a way for you to modify that. Now one thing I wanted to point out to you as well is you can create your own still images from the video. So if I come up here to my video and I say let's find a good video, let's pick uh, this little lunar lander. And I want to grab a still from that. I just get my pointer over what I want. And by the way, if it's hard to get the exact frame you want, that's where you might want to come down here and zoom in. And you zoom in by sliding it to the left so you can see more icons per second. So you slide over and then you get your pointer directly over the part you want and then you right click and you choose Add Still Frame to Project. And that will, see how it kind of whoop, pop down there for you? <laughs> so now I have the still picture that I can play. I'm going to hit the space bar and it's playing. Now because I turned off the Ken Burns effect, it didn't do anything to it, but I could do the Ken Burns effect. Just click on the uh, crop button, click on Ken Burns, hit play, and there's a nice default transition. The Ken Burns effect is kind of nice because it makes it look less like a, a slideshow and a little more like video. So I think it's a nice thing to have sometimes. I'm going to click done. So in that case, I want the Ken Burns effect, so I've got it. And if I want to preview it again, I just rest my mouse over the front here and hit the space bar to play. You can see the little red bar moving along down here as the video changes up above. That's the way you do it. That's the way you add the video. By the way, you can also do things to, let me go back to the crop button. You, make it, you can also rotate it. So if you realized it was a, uh, a portrait instead of a landscape photo where you, you, know, you turned the camera and you took a picture of somebody, then you can actually rotate it by clicking on these arrows. You might have wondered what those were. But that rotates the image. Let me just go to fit. So you can rotate the image. And so you can rotate and rotate. Now it's upside down. Now the rotate is kind of handy because you remember in a previous video when I did the review of the Kodak ZI-8 uh, little handheld video camera? I said that it was hard to, the viewing angle was bad and then when you held it up for like a concert and you might want to hold it upside down and record so you can see the screen better and then flip it in your video editing program. Well, that's how you do it. In fact, you can do that with video. For instance, let me take this video of this guy and no offense to this guy, but I can rotate it upside down. So if you did have something you shot completely upside down, you can fix it. Uh, you really, you know, you shoot horrible video, there's a lot of things you can do to fix the image. <laughs> so I'm going to turn him back because uh, he, he looks a little like the blood's going to the, his head. <laughs> Click done on that. One last thing I wanted to say is how you can add a photo uh, directly from the, like the, you know, a folder. So if I come to my folder and I go to my images, I can just take a photo and drag it directly into my project wherever I want to put it, right there. So now I have that Earth picture on there. Same thing for video, if I want to add video. However, there's one thing that's different about video, about just dragging that stuff in, is with video, you can't just drag it directly into your project. Notice I'm not getting that green bar where to put it. You've got to add it to an event. Videos, it views as events. It's a little inconsistent, but as long as you know it, you should be fine, which means I just need to add it to See how that highlights blue? It means I can drag it there and I get that green uh, circle with the white plus sign. And then I'll let go. And it's importing it, it's copying it, it's generating those little thumbnails so I can see the little icons. And now I have that video. And of course it may be farther down. Let me zoom out so I can see the video. And there's the video I just added. Do the same thing here with this picture, this one right here. Just add it, drag it over top of that what event I wanted. It's going to import it. And sometimes it takes a little while. And there we go. There's that shuttle launch video that I just added. So it's that simple to add clips that you may find off of the web. Some of them may not be in the right format and it may want to, um, you may have to convert them uh, using some kind of uh, conversion program.